Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's obviously not the best time, and some of you have met here in this room before, um, but for uh, nice occasions and um, maybe also uh, just as interesting topics, but uh, I think today's topic is probably uh, something which for the people out there is most relevant, and um, a lot of people have questions on how we're going to move forward in the next couple of weeks. Um, and uh, the world is in a crisis, um, and obviously Namibia is also affected uh, by this crisis. And um, the disease itself may not have the worst effects for all of us, but um, the most vulnerable people, um, the elderly, the, the ones um, who served this country, served the people, um, and those with diseases, uh, with other uh, infections or, or uh, lung problems or so, um, are affected. So we have to take care of them and have to make sure that they are okay. So we all have a joint responsibility. And um, one of the questions I've been bombarded uh, with yesterday, um, um, uh, Dr. Figo, it's a great pleasure to have you here this morning. Um, I'm, I'm going to pass that question on directly to you also for later. Is when are the measures going to kick in? Is it midnight tonight or is it midnight on Friday night? Um, so. Um, that's something maybe you can answer later on. Uh, allow me to, hold on, I actually just got one quote or something I would like to read out also, um, which I found actually is, is in a nutshell exactly what uh, we need to keep in mind. The virus, uh, the virus doesn't move. People move it. We need to stop moving. The virus stops moving. The, the virus dies. That's that simple. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for being here today. Before I carry on, I would like to address Dr. Afiko just uh, uh, briefly. Um, Dr. Afiko, thank you for being here. I think for, for us as, as the media, it's, it's very important. Uh, thank you also for recognizing our role in, in terms of being one of your partners in fighting this disease. Um, I think we all are on the same page that we're in this together. And um, we as media partners, I think I would speak for most of the media if I say that generally speaking, the reports have not been a blame game, but rather an informative game. And, and that's where we're strong. That's where we need to support you. Hopefully we'll be successful in doing that. So uh, really, I would invite you to, to this sort of uh, partnership. Um, Obviously, I'm, I'm at the end of the day from Namibia Media Holdings, but I know that for a fact we've started uh, initiatives and I know the Namibian has been busy, the radios have been busy, TV has been busy. So these sort of informative uh, booklets that are coming out, we, for example, launched a COVID page on, on Facebook. And the idea is really an invitation to every media player to, to talk to us Let's see how we can make this a neutral page. Uh, the COVID page is not designed to, uh, to be uh, only belonging to NMH, for example. It's supposed to be a Namibian page. So if you guys want to tie into it, that, have your uh, uh, newspaper reports uh, reflected on that page, radio uh, clips, TV clips, please speak to us so that we can integrate it because we really feel this is the one time where we shouldn't look at the uh, 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 Namibia dollars and cents. We should much uh, rather concentrate on getting this thing out of the way as fast as possible so that our economy doesn't uh, bleed too much. Uh, with that, uh, Dr. Fico, maybe if you want to take over. Uh, Thank you very much for that uh, brief introduction, and good morning, everybody. Um, just maybe to start clarifying what is uh, roaming in the air on social media as to when is the lockdown coming in effect. Uh, there was some confusion there. Uh, some people felt it's midnight tonight going into tomorrow. Uh, even some high-level government officials interpreted it that way. But it's midnight Friday going into Saturday morning. So meaning a minute past 12 o'clock, midnight on Friday, that's where the rule comes in effect. So please help me spreading it that way. 
midnight Friday going into Saturday morning. So that's t it's that thing. And there's another um, something else that is going on. People don't understand what it's. What's the meaning of lockdown? Um, and particularly when we say we are locking down commerce region and the Rongo, what exactly are we saying? And to make matters worse, when I say it doesn't follow geopolitical demarcation or constituency necessarily, it follow a piece actually of hardtap will be in the, in, in, integrated in, in, in commerce and another piece of uh, Osorinjupa because as you all know, um, there are people working in Vindu who come from Riobot every morning. And there are a lot of people coming from Okahanja working in Vindu. And Okahanja is in Osozonjupa, not in commerce. Uh, if you say you only lock down uh, commerce, uh, then you may have a bit of problems there. Now, why do we want to include Riobot and Okahanja? For one basic reason. Because essential and critical services will continue. And some of the people working in Vinduk come from Riobot who are performing critical services. So for that reason, we can't say, um, we can't put the border between Vinduk and Riobot, but we put it on the other side of Riobot. And then somebody asked me, so if, what about if I have my farms say, somewhere there where I can go with a gravel road? Well, if you are in commerce, and if you meet the definition of uh, restriction, then you go to your farm, deliver food to your farm worker, etc., etc. Et the other question was now, for instance, the people we put in Mariendal yesterday at the lodge there for quarantine, uh, somebody called me from Swakopmon and said, How do I visit my family when you are locking us down on, 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 on Friday? I said, Unfortunately, you have to wait. But then a lady is due for a caesarean section with a gynecology in Vindu coming from Swakop, I think next week, Monday. So she asked, how do we, are you saying we must postpone my caesarean section? I said, no, you can't. What we are looking at on that note is to combine, is to come up with a, an address where special cases, like somebody who's going for caesarean section, will we get your detail, and we really want this thing to go smoothly. We don't want to create another uh, consternation at roadblock like what happened at Greitas. Uh, so that if you coming from Swakop Moon, by the time you end up, uh, you leave Karibib coming to Okahanja, where you are likely to meet the roadblock, then at least your name should be there already. So that you only need to take out your ID and the officer read on the list, just like we are in a hotel and in, you're going for breakfast in the morning, they normally ask you from which room and they check on the list. If you are here, we confirm you are a guest. That kind of communication. It would, be, it would be seamless if we all sort of help each other, you know, making the message or spreading the message. Uh, there are a whole lot of uh, other operational issues that I won't be able to finish talking to you. I, I believe I've been invited here this morning to share with you how this partnership can be formed by all sector, and particularly the media. I just gave a copy of my rather rough drawing here. I wish I had a data projector just to put it here. But it's not meant to educate you on organogram or flow sheet. It's meant to tell you that on the right second column, it's you who is reflecting the media as a partner in this response, as a partner. You are requested to help come on board um, at even sort of coordination level, not just to receive the message and, and explain. We also want your input because when you are broadcasting or printing or distributing news, you, you, you know what it means. You experience the gap that you can suggest to us, how do we close these gaps? Um, you can suggest what is the easiest, the best way to spread the message. Uh, without getting it lost in the epidemic of, of, of fake news that is happening, especially on social media. That's where we need it, because you are the professional, you are the trained people in communication and media. So we need you on board. And you're not the only one. If you look at this sheet, I actually just came up with this flow sheet out of my mind, 
And based on my experience with hepatitis E, which we haven't won up to now, in fact, we are almost losing that battle. Then I thought this is now the time not to repeat the mistakes of hepatitis E. We must strengthen our structures, um, our human resources, um, other resources, but most importantly, we must strengthen our communication and collaboration and coordination. Those are the three um, uh, messages. Communication, coordination, and collaboration. Uh, this is also what the African Union is suggesting and African Center for Disease Control. As far as this outbreak is concerned, we must collaborate. Now, if you look on this flow sheet, there are about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. These are clusters I created as strategic partners in, approach, in our approach and response to the outbreak. The first one is the lead ministry, which is the Ministry of Health and Social Services. So this is the ministry that needs to help us with health-related policies. Uh, it needs to help us with a national strategic plan on response, guidelines, standard operation procedure, and confirmation and availability of health infrastructure and equipment, plus human resources. And I put in red the communication because it's so key. Under that, we are led into the eight response pillars of the World Health Organization, which is the global response. Under those, you have what you call preparedness and response, which is the most important one, because if we're not prepared, we can't respond most effectively. We will be wobbling and, 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 and drifting one from one corner to another while the virus is multiplying. So we also need what we call point of entry, and this is one of the cause of chaos. I've seen it yesterday, and it's also linked to poor communication. Yesterday, we organized a very, 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 very nice welcoming of our citizens who came from Europe with KLM. I was on board that plane. I spoke to them exactly the way I'm speaking to you, and I interacted with them. They asked questions. Some of them were very, very distressed. There was a a lady who went to bury her mother in Poland, but as she arrived in Poland, she was told, no, you can't go to your mother's funeral. So she came back from Poland without burying her mother. Somebody else buried her mother. And she, you can imagine the level of stress. You travel all the way with all the risk when you arrived, you are told you can't bury your mom. So I spent almost half an hour with that lady. But in the end, when she was disembarking, we were sitting on, standing on the side of the plane, uh, saying bye-bye and bye-bye, and she stood and faced me and said, you, you are the best doctor I have, never, I have ever met in my life. So, no magic, it's just a matter of patience, listening to the person, no matter how distressed the person is. Uh, don't lose your, 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 your temper. Don't come to the patient or person's level to put up the fight, like I'm seeing what's happening in Parliament nowadays anyway. So don't do those things because you will lose the battle, you know. And uh, as a result of that, we very successfully, they are happy. Three of them sent me SMSs from Marienda. Oh, this is such a beautiful place. We are so happy. But if I take that and compare to what is happening, happening at Greatest, completely the opposite. And it's because of the approach. Number one, the people at Greatest only here for the first time that they are going to be quarantined when the captain was announcing on the plane to tell the people to fasten their seat belts, to switch off the, the standard you get when you're on board. And some of them didn't even take it seriously. No, this is a joke. It can't be. True to the, uh, to the captain's words, they come here, they were taken to Greater. Now, the owner of Greater was only informed about 14 hours before the arrival of the people. And she was debating. I know Cynthia, her name is Cynthia. I know her very well because her husband was my classmate from Standard 6 up to her. And she told me, look, I regret allowing myself to be in this. I should have not allowed these people to come. Why? Because us from the health sector or those responsible did not communicate on time. They told the person at the very last minute, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to hammer who and who. I'm here to identify what I think are the gaps that we need to plug so that we don't repeat the same mistake. So the mess at greatest is a communication issue more than anything else. 
we should have communicated well in advance. And then preparation should have been taking place. I met the families and the parents of those people at, at Greatest just the day before yesterday, and I'm going to meet them again today. And they were up in arms. I listened carefully, and some were crying, some were standing up and you know, coming close to me. Luckily, the police was there. And at the end, I, because I wanted to distinguish between principle and practice, I said, look, if I, let's say I am a magician, and I raise my hand towards Greatest. When I put my hand down, everything at Greatest looked like Hilton or Avani or any other form. Would you still want your families to get out? And they all say, no. I mean, if you say Hilton, then it's good. So it clearly shows that people are not necessarily against the principle of quarantine, but they want services. They want communication. They want this. And that is where we need to focus. Now, coming back to yesterday, after we dispatched a team of 40 to Marienta, and I had to come and run around as usual with meeting. At about 4 o'clock, I was supposed to meet the technical team there. As I arrived, I get a phone call. There is chaos at the airport. So I was shocked. Which chaos now? Say, no, there are three planes that arrive. And the official says, they, these people must be quarantined. Now, imagine I had a planning meeting I had consulted with colleagues in the morning. We planned that we go to KLM. We set the whole scene nicely. We dispatched the people. But no one told me that we will block three planes in the afternoon. Yeah. An order was just given, take them for quarantine. There was no bus to take them to quarantine. By the time they are supposed to be taken to quarantine, it's already past 6 o'clock. And the only available space we have is Mariendal, two hours per bus from here. But can you see the lack of planning and lack of communication, what it can, especially communication? Because if we were away in the morning, we would have made preparations just like we did with those that came from Europe. So I had to go to the airport, spend about three, four hours negotiating, phoning every minister and up to president, and then compromise and say, OK, fine. One of the issues that came up was the statement or declaration made by the president and the minister of health. And it was interpreted completely different. Some people, like you asked the question here at the beginning, some people interpreted it that these measures will come into effect 27 March 2020, which is tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, or is it today? Tomorrow. So companies such as NMEPR prepare themselves, and you know they were given at least three days to prepare themselves. They issue a statement that from 27, they will stop operation, they won't fly. Little did they know that they would be instructed yesterday to quarantine anyone coming in from anywhere else. And in the, in the initial declaration and, 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 and state of emergency on the 17th of March, there was no inclusion of South Africa. People have been moving up. And interestingly, even yesterday morning, a plane came as usual. You know, they offload people at Walfus Bay, and they came to Vinduk Airport, they offload people. But then the afternoon planes were blocked. Where is sense an organization in, in our structure? So, ladies and gentlemen, we need you to work with us and to help us, and especially spreading the message in a standardized way, concise with one voice, and trying to cut out all of this mess. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. And I, I never knew human beings are this type of animals until I, I come into this position. I think you know it better because you communicate. So concluding, therefore, we have a cluster. Yeah, thank you very much. We have a cluster of Ministry of Finance because nothing moved without finance. Luckily, the minister called me yesterday to their cabinet meeting. I briefed them because they were also stuck with the definition. When is this thing coming in effect? Is it midnight Thursday or midnight Friday? I told them I have been told midnight Friday, and that's where the case. So Ministry of Home Affairs. They phoned me also yesterday about this patient, I mean the passengers that are locked up at the airport. They phoned me about all the people that are locked up at the border to Chicago and other places. So I now told them we need a focal person from your sector because it's a very important sector. So I will get the permanent secretary, or I mean executive director of Home Affairs, to be the focal person 
at the high level when we plan this coordination and response, that when we make policies, we, we are all on the same wavelength. Then we have the security cluster, which has done very well. I met with the defense force, I met with uh, police, and uh, we discussed a whole lot. They put a helicopter on standby. We were supposed to fly to Pius Mayundu or a place near um, Hobabes yesterday to make the place ready for those who may need quarantine, but we could not get because we got a, a NWI uh, lodge in, in Marinda. But that helicopter is still on standby, and I'm meeting them at 11 o'clock. So because the roadblock we're talking about need to be mined by them. So that, that is going very well. And then we have the international relations, obviously that responsible for solicitation of support from friendly country um, at high level, uh, diplomatic relations, like yesterday the embassy of Japan asked me, are the diplomats exempted from this lockdown? I say, no, unfortunately not. And I, I say this after consultation with uh, uh, Menetumbo. And she told me, no, they will have to behave according to our rules, and which, which is true, and unless if there's uh, an exception. And then we talk about development partners. These are mainly UN agencies, CDC, Atlanta, who are fully on board. I don't even have to elucidate anything there. Then the state-owned sector um, uh, enterprises. I had a meeting yesterday with Telecom, and I hope to meet MTC, because they need to help us to set up communication infrastructure. As we speak now, ladies and gentlemen, our operation base is not yet up to scratch. And we need to get it up to scratch. Otherwise, I'm floating like a briefcase person, yeah? So I told the ministry that we need a very, very basic podium, speakers, and lights, because we are operating in a place that has got no light. And then we move on to complicated stuff. So I'm going to push for that. So we need that base to operate from, because we need to operate on a daily basis, every day, including Saturday and Sunday. I need to brief the nation, or a colleague need to brief the, the nation. That's the only way we can give the right message all the time, and, and obscure this fake news that is dominating the scene now. So we need an operation or a command base. You know, I always say it in the United States, the president says something almost every day. That's how serious that. And look at the resources they put in, two trillion US dollars. It's a matter of not just being rich, but also committed to fighting this output. So we need to do the bit at our level, and the best way is to start being organized. So I met the, some of the private sector yesterday, and we think that uh, not only like the medical or others, we also need to meet the people who are feeding us every day. You know, sometimes we forget and we think that if you have money in your pocket, you can feed yourself. Money will never feed you. You need apples and potatoes from the guy who's, who's, who's selling it. So I need to meet the, the, the retailers. I spoke to some of them, hopefully today or tomorrow, because we also need to make them understand that when the lockdown comes, these are the measures that will happen. Because one of the issues is the, and I want everyone to understand, we have recommended the reduction of the threshold of people meeting from 50 to 10, meaning that at any point, no more than 10 people must meet. And they must meet within a meter in between. I hope you are in a meter between yourself. So these are the things that will help the, the virus not to move. And I like the, the opening statement here that the virus doesn't move. It's true, it doesn't move. It's the movement of people that will cause the problem. If you cut down the movement of people, will shut down this virus. And this country, being Namibia, being so big, being so less populated, having fairly reasonable amount of resources, we can set the example for Africa or even the world. We can literally lock this virus out that it doesn't decimate it. But if we continue under the current way of doing things, it will hit us and hit us very hard. So this window of opportunity is just ever narrowing like this. We need to do fast because we can't expand this opportunity once it's gone. We have to take the punch. So I have to talk to people who are providing us food to tell them because they are part of what we call essential services. They cannot close. We can't close shop, not even hotel, not even restaurant. We can only limit the number of people at any given time uh, who are entering. We also need to talk to people who are providing us with water because this is an essential service. Electricity is an essential service. Um, and water, 
not just in terms of amount, but the treatment of water demands some chemicals and membrane, and they are imported. So on transportation and logistic, we have to allow this truck. Like yesterday I was told, a truck is stuck at the border for medicine for the warehouse here. And it only be ascribed to poor communication and poor coordination. How do you lock up a truck full of medicine? Aren't you contributing or making things worse already than the virus? You only do that because you are not informed. You are basically you know, ignorant. And you are not able to communicate because it's a matter of putting up, picking up your phone and call whoever is responsible for the border. I have, because common sense must also come in. We know very well that a lot of us will be alive and depending on medicine. Why not picking up a phone and phone the Ministry of Health and say, I have a truck here uh, full of medicine. Of course, please inspect the truck because at this time, drug smugglers and others will take the opportunity. Make sure it's a truck full of medicine, not few medicine plus drug. And then tell the person, I have this truck. What can we do? So they locked people there and say, no, 14 day quarantine. Finish. You know? And we have that terrible attitude of not listening to people when you are in a position of authority. Say, no, I'm this is gone, I told you. When the person say, where can then I get help? No, I don't know. So that kind of attitude is just making things worse. We need to be compassionate. We need to show empathy at all times. That's the only way we can win. So I've spoken about water, security, logistic, um, human resources always coming up, technical support by the private sector and, and the economic sector. And then we move on to, to data collection because we need to know where we are in this response. If we just rock up here and I say, oh, we need, I think, one million tomorrow, the other one, I think the statistic will be, it won't help us. So I brought in National Statistic Agency. We spoke to them, I will meet them officially again, and they will have to come and help us with data services data management, modeling, and forecasting. I think they, they are the best. Together with them, we rope in the academic and scientists, people from like University of Namibia, NAST, also to help us. And then we have you, the media, messaging, community education, communication. So that's where I want you. And lastly, civil society. We can't leave them out. They will create their own program if you leave them out. Church leaders, all these influential people need to come on board so that we move as one team. So in a nutshell, or oh, sorry for a lengthy uh, expression, this is the way we are doing things at the moment, but we expect every one of you to help us in that. So I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to answer a direct question. Thank you. I, I will leave this one as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I can wait. Uh, Stefan, should I moderate? Or? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Ladies first. Um, I'm Shalina Wilson from Eden and Age. Uh, I just want to know, has your task team perhaps con had contact with the Labour Ministry? In this time, a lot of um, employers are thinking the employees were were firing them, were thinking to them, um, not understanding exactly what is happening. Should they apply for leave? Should they take some pay leave? Just in here, if you have contact with them, and also the conditions are under which let's uh, say at uh, the, food, the food stores are going to work. Ha have you consulted um, with the retailers? I know you said you're going to speak to retailers. What are the conditions that they're going to uh, put forward for the tellers, um, the hours that they're going to work, the precautionary measures they're going to take? Um, we see that they will come into contact with a lot of, of, of people every day. Mm -hmm. You want to take more questions than an answer? Yeah, maybe I can take two or three at a time. What exactly is the list of essential services? Mm. Because we've had a lot of questions where people have heard, well, we don't want you to close your business, but you have to go to skeleton staff or just let people work from home. But essential services, there's a lot of confusion around what that entails and who will be allowed to move around to go to work. Um, when will people be allowed to leave the Enongo and Comus regions for the last time or still enter? The point why I'm asking is imagine being up in Enongoland on a business trip and just not being able to make it in time for midnight. Will they still be allowed back home into Comus or Enongo wherever they're based? Um, or is it then a case, sorry, you stay outside? Thank you. Okay. 
Yeah, I have three questions. I will come back to you. On the Labor Ministry, Attorney General and the Executive Director of Health yesterday had a very long, long, long meeting. And the idea is to come up with a framework within which this, this declaration, this policy declaration will be implemented. One of the issues that will be touched is the issue of labor. And the Ministry of uh, Finance is also busy uh, with modality of how to make sure that we don't put we don't push a huge number of people back into poverty because this is you know a job will be lost um, the economy will contract that's very unfortunate I, I told the minister yesterday now what is it that we can do that a lady who earns her bread on a daily basis what she sell in the street is what she buy to get she doesn't have a bank account with 10,000 on which you can withdraw 500 what do we do with those people? Because there are many of them, you know? So the Ministry of Finance together with labor and poverty and the, not, I think it's the gender and poverty combined are working on a strategy to make sure that we look at mitigation factor. And one of the factors I heard being mooted is speaking to private sector like banking sector um, to, 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 to lessen their demand, maybe the person has got a low cost house, uh, which will be a problem as, as far as premium paying is concerned, or maybe it's an SMS where we need to consider cash, uh, cash transfer. Uh, maybe if the person is a taxi driver or he drives passengers from here to Walfus Bay, Swakopmund, and he earns, let's say, 3000 a month out of his business. Maybe we give him 1,000 instead. So these are all measures that are being um, uh, being, being being discussed, and hopefully, um, in the shortest possible time, we'll get a solution and implement it. Hopefully, starting with the most low um, uh, segments of society, because otherwise, we are going to make poverty worse. Actually, to be honest with you, so the ministry or the new minister of labour, I'm sure, will be on board on that. Uh, from my side, I'm coordinating the activity, but um, at a strategic level, but some of these specialized sectors, I will have to have uh, people helping me out because I won't be able to, to run around like this all the time. Uh, the list of essential services seems to be endless. We were discussing it this morning with Dr. Samu Moses, who is WHO uh, representative. I, I was jogging and we met, I think, in Nelson Mandela somewhere. I am the one who recovered. I actually got the fright of his life. Uh, when I say doctor. <laughs> so we end up jogging together this morning and of course discussing what are the list of essential services. So we start with medical, anything related to medical service, whether you are a doctor or a nurse in a hospital or clinic or you are a pharmacist or you are an ambulance driver, whatever relates and link to health care, that is not going to be touched. It stays in that. And then we come to to food, because as I say, we all depend on that. Anyone selling food, we will not close that services. We may just limit the number of people coming to buy food at any, any given time. If you are operating a fire brigade, we won't close that. And yesterday, Minister Kale asked me, well, what about agricultural worker, farm worker? I said, well, they are one chain of food supply. We can't touch them. Luckily, normally farm workers are not in their hundreds. And the space is so big, so there's no big risk there. So anything relating to food, uh, we won't touch that. Obviously, uh, the, 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 the supply of fuel, as we all know, um, that is essential service. We won't touch that. Anything to do with power supply, water supply, um, um, some other logistic like the truck that are bringing in either medicine or, or material to clean water or whatever. And then we come to cleaning services because if we are not clean, uh, we're increasing the risk of diseases. So anyone cleaning is considered uh, an essential service. Uh, then the list goes and up, become a little bit narrow. Uh, but construction is not necessarily an essential service. Somebody called me yesterday and said, no, in South Africa they're doing construction. Said, that, that's a very strange because lockdown means lockdown. You stay at home. Mining sector is up in Mam. Yesterday I was at the um, at their meeting. 
uh, they saying if we if we go on total lockdown, uh, some of the mines will close permanently. I, I told uh, the Minister of Mines and the Minister of Finance to discuss that because I'm not an expert in that area. But going to work in a mining sector, um, if the virus hasn't ended your community or your population, you are safe. You can be thousands of you. The problem is if the virus enters, then it will have to lock. So that needs to be discussed as well by the expert. Now, the movement of people, let's say, between commas and around, is difficult when the clock tick, um, and we know that it won't be 100% that everyone will comply. So once the clock tick, we then look at case by case. But our intention is not to make it just an announcement and people make advantage. Some of the people will have to suffer the 21 days staying in Ovambaland or Kaoko and Okavango uh, because we're not going to allow it because we will make a mockery of our own decision. I know that um, the, the announcement came a little bit a way of things, but we just have to stick with that, unfortunately. We have to lock down, and if you are in uh, Katima, you will have to stay there for 21 days. Um, that's basically it. Yes. Another round of questions. Um, just adding, I have one short question, adding to what you just said. You were saying that the number of people limited, uh, are limited to go into a supermarket. Yeah. Uh, what is that number and the, what is the, I mean, it depends on the size of the supermarket. If you take a shop in the, on the corner yeah. Yeah. or you take metro, yeah. uh, obviously that makes a big difference. Yes. Um, the ideal thing would be knowing what is the size of your supermarket in square meters. And then we say, okay, uh, the one or ten square meter, we allow one person or two. Okay. Yeah. If you have hectares, you have more people. If you have little thing, maybe one person. That's, that's the best way. Uh, maybe those would be, are you following up on the other side? Yes. What yes. yes. would be the uh, retail hours which you will allow? Uh, say it again. The retail hours. The, the oh yeah, hours. the retail hours. <coughs> sorry, we haven't uh, made a, uh, a final decision, but we will think that to compensate for the reduction of number of people coming in, we will we will advise the retailers to open more hours, maybe from six uh, to six or six to eight, depending on. We will listen to them as well. What is that that they are able to do? So, but we are recommending an expansion of the operation hours and days. So, uh, yes? Cremations, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, 
somewhere in the Rongo, the border, that region, how are we going to control it? And the other thing is also the regulations, and that is perhaps one of the questions I need to be very clear on. The regulations, uh, I think it should be very clear, uh, so that it does not allow for any interpretation, because it's difficult when you have to uh, enforce a regulation and it's left to at the, the discretion of, uh, like we say, a border official that happened in the case of uh, of, of now at North Pool or RM3. Is the media an essential service also? Because that is also a debate that we are having internally with our own staff and so on. With this organogram that you have presented, are we looking at making the media an essential service? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Hi, my name is Cindy I just wanted some clarity, in short, the commuting between Liyabosa to Ventuk and Ogarija to, to, to Ventuk, uh, does that uh, mean that the people can commute? I just wanted to, to get some clarity on that between the two towns. Can I questions now? Yeah. Can I maybe answer? Uh, can I start with the last one? Yes. The reason why we include Liyabosa and Ogarija into commerce because you have people coming from those two towns doing services here. Much, some of those services are essential services. So we don't want to lock Riopot out. And then we have people performing essential services like ICU nurses, um, fire brigade, and, and some pharmacists, and even doctors who may come in from Okaraja. That's the only reason why we include those. But uh, um, if we didn't have the people coming in from those towns, then we would have locked them out. Yeah, because they're not part of commerce. I just want also to add that locking out commerce in Erongo is maybe an initial step or first step. In the end, we need to lock down the country if we have to succeed. Um, China has shown us a very good example. They started in Wuhan and basically locked down the whole country. Russia did it way, way, way ahead. That's why you have about 100 cases in Russia. Only 100. So lockdown the country, it worked as far as this disease outbreak is concerned. And that's what we need to, to move to as soon as possible. <coughs> Ventilators. Ah, I have a lot of problems with equipment in the health sector. Uh, I am told about seven or eight ventilators, brand new ventilators, came in last week. I haven't seen them myself. Maybe I should make an effort to do that. But they were said by the Minister of Health, so I trust this, uh, this is a true thing. Uh, I was also told that there were 10 mobile ventilators bought over the last, I don't know how many years. Uh, and they are at hospitals all over the country, but they were never used. Uh, this is not a a, a, a strange news to me especially. There are a lot of equipment that we buy that we don't use. So I'm now told that those ventilators are now being brought to Vinduk to a center of play, I'm in place, together with the new one the ministry have bought. And obviously you have some ventilators like in ICU at Vinduk Central Hospital. So we have a couple of ventilators, but from the logistic committee, um, they presented to us and say we need about 88 ventilators for the country. If we have to put up structures at the district level, uh, that is the, the need for the country. Uh, because ventilators that are used for, for normal patients cannot be shared with those that are having coronavirus for the moment, but it can be used later once it has been disinfected or allowed for the virus to die a natural cause. So it's not like you use the ventilator for um, a coronavirus patient and then after that you throw it out. It's a very expensive machine, but they also have mechanism for cleaning. It's just that you have to let the time pass by to make sure that the virus doesn't stay in there. So that's one thing on ventilator. Um, <clears throat> on the on the roadblock issue, uh, I, as I say, I have a meeting at 11 o'clock with the security cluster. These are the police and, uh, and the defense. The police has been on the ground. Commissioner Mbumbulu called me yesterday evening told me that the ground force are back to report back, and they invited me to be at a meeting at 11 o'clock. So after that, I will give more clarity. But it looks like it's manageable. 
because the feeding arteries to Vindu, Comas, and Erongo seems to be fairly well demarcated. Both the bitumen pipe uh, road and the gravel road, so I think they can be manned. I just want to say that all of these things can only be successful if we have the cooperation of the community. Uh, if the community doesn't cooperate, we will always, uh, always have uh, loopholes. They can always go on the farm, climb a tree, jump a fence, and go that way. We need to let the community understand and cooperate. Why were people sent home yesterday? I wish I, I had the one stuck question, but it's a controversial thing. Uh, because the order was given uh, from the minister that they must be quarantined. Among them, some of the Supreme Court advocates and all those people actually, they were already trying to reach the president and I think some of them spoke to the president. And the problem is not really the communication to president or minister. So the problem was that people, like I said at the beginning of my discussion, have all along been under the impression that the lockdown is starting tomorrow, meaning all the border will be closed and regions, as we have said. Even a Namibia issued a statement yesterday saying that from 27 March we close our, we, we suspend all our flights between Johannesburg and Windhoek and Cape Town and Windhoek. And that caused a rush of people in South Africa to come home before the effect of the 27. Meanwhile, from the Ministry of Health, a statement was issued as an additional to what was said on the 17th of March, saying that everyone from higher risk country, when coming here, all Namibian retained, they must be quarantined. Not specifically saying South Africa, but say all higher risk countries. And then the semantic comes in. Is South Africa a high-risk country or not? But to me, it's not a matter of defining whether South Africa is a high-risk country. It's a question of communication and miscommunication and poor coordination, maybe. So on the basis of that, and given the fact that quarantine is a principle, not a practice, meaning that if I say quarantine, you can self-quarantine at home. We can quarantine you in a hotel we think we can afford as government. Or we can have somebody having a five-star lodge there, charging a certain fee, but complying with the standard and principle of quarantine. And if you can afford the five-star hotel that comply with all the principle, fine with us, we put you there. But then you pay yourself for that. And we can come up with any other structure. As long as the standard and condition for quarantine are the same, it doesn't matter where you are. And I know I'm putting myself up now here because I'm going to meet the people who are the greatest. They say, oh, you said it. Now we want to go home. So it's, 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 it's one of those things that, that catches you in leadership. So going home, I, I had to go in there because they were threatening even the police started throwing things. They've been there for, for eight hours and they were not informed that they would be quarantined. And there's no clear statement. The advocate were, were saying, look, where is the law applicable here? So we went in. I told them, you are all potential suspects. And I am even now because I'm with you. And I told them, we are going to use your surveillance form, those forms that you fill in with your ID number, contact me. That as soon as one of you out of the, they were about uh, 66, as soon as one is tested positive, we're going to go around, all of you will have to be uh, quarantined or tested. Well, first of all, quarantined. Then I told him, okay, for now, you're going home in self sort of quarantine. We know that a lot of them will not do that. They will go and drink and do it. So that's how Namibian that. But there will be a few of them who will hear our message. So we are hoping that they will follow that instruction. And then we see what happened. There is a real risk that will pick up a few more cases because of that. I, 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 I admit that. Not only for those that I released at the airport yesterday, but even those who disembark in Walfus Bay without any check and the plane that landed earlier in the morning. So we are in, in that kind of situation. And that is why I said we need to, going forward, we really need, especially from tomorrow, which now should be clear to everybody that we lock down uh, these two regions 
and later possibly the whole country. And I'm going to try and persuade the, the political or decision makers to just shut down the whole country, basically. So that's where I am, uh, Jemima, regarding the, the, the case yesterday. Now, on the bodies, I really hope that we don't go to that stage, even though we need to prepare, because we really just don't want the Italian way. I am confident that if we put these lockdown measures in effectively and early, we will not have too many people dying. Now, let's go to that scenario, that unwanted scenario of, you know, we have to die. Uh, we need to speak to uh, the responsible sector for cremation, but we know in Namibian culture largely, they don't like their body being burned. So there will be mass funeral, maybe two people burying a body and one or so, because we will not allow more than 10 people going to funeral. And we need to sensitize the community now, because when they are grieving, they will never listen to us. So that's, that's one thing. I don't foresee mass cremen, uh, cremations, I foresee mass funeral because our people like visiting their bodies where they are buried and they don't like burning at all, especially uh, the northern tribes or, or folks, you know, where I come from, they, I know, and that's the reality, they don't like it. So what we need to prepare is how do we, we bury that? And the feeling is that, or the principle is that we bury them like we used to bury people who die from Congo fever or slightly like those who die from Ebola, because the body can still be infected. So, uh, uh, infectious, you know. Uh, we, we don't want family to bury their loved one. They can attend, but the state will bury those. That's, that's where we are. Now, regulation, uh, Attorney General and PS are in meetings since yesterday, and I hope by today or tomorrow they will come up with uh, clear regulation. I will take your questions. To, take, uh, to let the expert uh, help me answer. Uh, and that's important point you raised. I, I think we must be punitive in some instances because it's no point putting up a law and the one who break the law will look at it. You must face the consequences, carry your cross, that's what I'm saying. And that's, that's one of the weaknesses of our system. We don't punish culprits as they should be punished. Uh, so they should be criminalized. Um, and this applies to roadblock. Um, uh, if we say don't cross that road and you do it, we, you have to be punished, you know, but it must be clear to everyone which road uh, can be used when and what. The media, I think, is an essential service. A lot of people have been asking, how do we deliver the messages to people if we shut down the media? We may just make the case worse. Not to say you can prosper and make money. You need to come on board as, an, uh, as, a, help, as a helping hand, but I don't foresee uh, the locking down of the media. All I can recommend is to, for you to pay more attention to electronic communication and media and messaging instead of the hard copies because that exposes people's state. That's, that's my view. Um, I think I have answered your question, Okay, next uh, round, maybe, three questions. Yes. Um, Yes, I, I definitely don't want to shoot the messenger because it's, it's too late now in any case. I think Namibia as a country has got a lot of uh, trust in you and your capabilities to handle this. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned the, the issue of poor communication several times now. Uh, because this is why we are also having this meeting. Uh, I quickly made sums in my head. I think it took us now about 36 to 40 hours to be sure when this lockdown will commence. Uh, so, I mean, that's past us. But today and tomorrow, how are, we going to, how are we going to go forward to prevent this from happening again and again and again? Because uh, I feel it's not fair to business in this country uh, to employers, to employees, to, to uh, have, if any, everyone is unsure, what, what must I do, can I, what can I not do, and the, 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 the clock is ticking, it continues to be ticking, so I would, I would say if we are only going to get final regulations yet, uh, tomorrow lunchtime, we, uh, I, I, I think this the government really should have been working through, through the last two nights. 
Um, so just tell us what is the the, the solution to around this whole communication issue, and then very important because you mentioned print now, and and I work for a newspaper, so it's print, and you are saying we are essential, but we need to know can we transport newspapers from Kamas region into the rest of our country? Can our journalists, obviously we're not going to send a small bus with 15 journalists in it to Kubabas, but let's say we want to send uh, one journalist to Kubabas or Tsumeb or uh, Uber or what the case might be, we need to know actually if you could tell us now can we do that or not. Thank you very much. Now, you said earlier 10 is the number um, reduced to the people that would, would be together at a time. Now, what about your beans and bars? Um, I know most of our listeners are very concerned because most churches suspended their church services um, to adhere to these regulations. And then, are the army and the police, are they fully informed about um, when the lockdown is going to take effect? about people moving around, going to shops and um, to pharmacies and stuff. Thank you. First one, third question here. Um, Dr. Fiku, maybe it's part of the, the, the response to Dami's question already, but uh, will we have, as media, I think what we need is a daily briefing session to get one centralized point of information that goes out to all media. And I think one of the things we need to stop is this media trying to rush and, and, and publish breaking, breaking news and we publish things that are incomplete statements with not enough information that we've properly thought through uh, from the perspective of what we want the public to know. So I think for us as media that's an important thing to get out of that rat where we, we're trying to be the ones breaking the news and move our minds to how do we be really inform inform the public. That is one thing and then maybe if I can just make a comment about uh, the profitability of media, um, and as we sit in here, and I think most people in media will tell you, when we had a majority of retail clients pulled advertising yesterday, um, and there's been a lot of people that have been cancelled with advertising. So actually, when we, I'm sitting now as executive in media, uh, the financial viability of media is, is also a struggle. It's not as if people have the expectation that media must deliver the service, but, but our revenue streams have already been cut. Can I try to speak to this air? Okay. Uh, Dr. Seeing that you have been exposed to so many groups of uh, um, people at risk, have you been tested yourself? Myself? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've been tested. Uh, I actually been tested at NIP first, and uh, yeah, I went for the second test. Uh, and I think they sent me the result is on my laptop. <laughs> uh, the first one was negative. I had the flu, that was back in February when I came back. I went to Dubai for an Arab health summit there. Uh, I passed Jordan and then I came, I spent two days in South Africa, but then there was no case in South Africa. Then I went to Ethiopia, so I developed a terrible cough and, uh, and muscle aches that I never knew. Um, so I, I was advised to do the test, so I did the test, including a whole lot of other tests. So yes, I did. But I'm not saying everyone must do a test. I had, I had those symptoms uh, long before the epidemic was actually worse. What was the basis for the question, by the way, if I may ask? Me. Mm. Why did you ask if I'm tested? No, <laughs> I, gave my, I gave you my honest answer, but was, what was the reason? Because you said you told the group that they were, they are all, uh, they were all suspects, including yourself. Ah, OK. They yeah, would be tested if, if, if there's something around. Yeah, yeah. If I if I develop uh, symptoms again, I will have to be tested. But they say that uh, yeah, because I'm I'm still I'm still at risk because I'm negative. I was I wasn't positive unless uh, I will check uh, what uh, they say on my laptop there. Uh, if it uh, if I'm positive, ooh, then that's terrible because I met so many people that basically I must have transmitted the virus or something, which I hope is not the case. Uh, uh, maybe I should check my result and, and spread it out to people if it's negative or positive. 
Because if it's positive, I have to oof, apologize, maybe. I don't, know, I don't know what to say, because I've been in contact with people. I think you must check yeah. before we leave here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, I will check my email from uh, Carl Hausman uh, to, to see what's, uh, what's it. Uh, doctor, if it is positive, it yeah. means we are also potential suspects. Yes, all of you, yeah. There's yes, two more questions to be yeah. answered, and then Sorry. we can go to the next round. So yeah. maybe uh, yeah. let's go back to the questions, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. we have. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Yeah. We will, uh, uh, okay, uh, 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 yeah. Um, I fully agree with the issue of poor communication. In some aspect, I actually feel like we put the cart before the horse. If you look at uh, some of our communication, and uh, some are political statements, once it's made, there's nothing I can reprimand uh, a minister or a president or somebody. All we need to do is to learn the lesson out of that. And going forward, please not to repeat the mistakes. That I fully agree. And that's why, in line with the question here in front of me, we are, and this is what I said at the beginning, that we need to build that command center there, where every morning, Monday to Sunday, we are there, either myself or a colleague, briefing the media and the media passing on the information. So breaking news is when you don't have enough uh, input or what. So because I heard somebody saying to avoid breaking news, because there's a lot of breaking news now on social media. So if we are briefing you, maybe sometimes twice a day or at least on a daily basis so you won't have many breaking news right oh okay so we're working on that but we're working on that with somebody representing the media houses to help us even just framing the statement for the understanding of the media because i think one of the reasons why you guys don't understand us is because we don't have that link and exchange for instance looking at my my statement as a Minister going to make and say, okay, remember, can you look, is that fine for the media? And then you can say, no, the comma comes here, and here yeah, you don't need a capital letter. So that kind of communication, I think, will clarify a whole lot of things. Uh, I look at the newspaper, like I look at, uh, as a, at a TV news. I don't see any much difference. It's only that the other one is electronic and the other one is paper. So if I can watch news on NBC in Katima, I can as well read the Republican in Katima. So I think it's a fair deal. Yes, I think you can transport the newspaper to the region. The whole idea is avoiding many people coming in contact. If we can do anything without that sort of scenario, we can do many things. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, so that, that's on that. On Channel 7, uh, the bars and the shabins, etc., will close. But I was not quite comfortable with the announcement that they will close at 6 o'clock. What happened before 6? So we need to revisit that statement and, and just say, look, maybe not to say the bars will be closed because they will feel singled out. Say, so why the bars and not the bottle store? So if we say no more than 10 people at any place, it may be enough, because we also don't want to create backlogs, uh, you know, a backlash, you know. Um, the police inf is informed. We have a meeting with them at 11 o'clock. I think I did mention this before. They are actually ahead of us. You know, security is something else. I don't foresee any problem there. Uh, and the daily briefing is just what I've said here. Um, yeah, every business will go down, and these are some of the punches that we must take in favor of our health. I, I have gone down since I've become minister, actually, from my practice. I no longer earn that much money. Uh, and even worse now that I'm coordinating that, I can hardly do anything of, uh, of, of profitability. I have some shares in, uh, in a tourism uh, establishment, uh, the Gondwana uh, establishment. I'm one of the shareholders there, and we are going to go down. There's, there's no doubt about it. So all of us will go down, that's, that's the reality. But if we put this strategy in place for the three weeks and we see that the curve is flat, not going up, we, we review all these mechanisms and slowly loosening up the lockdown. And then maybe we add another two weeks. If we don't see increase, let's say in a month or two or three months, then we open business again, perhaps without opening up the border. 
except for for logistic. I think that's my phone there. It might be like president calling. Can someone just answer? Stay in the back. Uh, just answer when. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, you can just answer. You can just answer. Again. Say I'm speaking. So um, uh, the knockdown is a reality, and that's why you see economies such as U.S. Um, that's why you see economies such as U.S. stimulating, coming up with stimulus packages. If we have some reserve somewhere, we need to, to mobilize those reserves. I'm not just sure about the reserve now, but uh, the Minister of Finance uh, will, will tell us. Uh, so that, there's no doubt about it. Maybe we can have the final one because I need to go now. Okay, three last questions. Yeah. Can uh, we start with those who never... With the, with the, with the yeah, I got that. Okay. Ah, yeah. um, so we need to have a balance here so that everybody yeah. gets a chance. Yes. Lady with the uh, um, flowers. Okay, um, Doctor, I just want to be sure. You mentioned two end cleaning services as being part of the essential services. Do you mean as in formal, like the formal part of providing food, like the stores? I mean, what about the hookah shops? Not anything really formal parts of town. And then cleaning is a good domestic cleaning so like the time my domestic worker has to come. And then the last question is yeah. the aspect of when the lockdown is over people have to come back to look at stuff in their own home. Let me test when everyone that comes back in. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the gentleman at the back. Uh, thank you once again, Doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are discriminating. This lady never said the way. Oh, well, she got caught. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm allowed to. Yeah, yeah. please come to the office. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, and the matter is the chair as well. Uh, just uh, you are saying also the rules of engagement have to be different now. Yes. Uh, in terms of industry, we are seeing in other countries that uh, uh, car makers are now starting to. Uh, distillers are starting to go into and sanitizing and things like that. Is it possible that uh, our very small manufacturing sector, specifically, we are looking at maybe a distillery in Monoru that could go into, instead of producing alcohol now, to produce this kind of hand sanitizers? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Last but not least. Um, that's it. So, again, back to the essential services, because I think this is a question we're going to keep or the thing that we're going to keep getting questions about, will a list be released with specifications to add to one of the previous questions, things like cleaning services, what does cleaning services entail, um, food services, does that mean that if you are not an essential service, if you are a clothing store, if you are a car parts store, that you are not allowed to be open, or that you are just restricted on the number of people that you have in your business at any given time. Um, and then just lastly, a list, and with the essential services government offices, what will be accessible, what will not. Um, and then lastly, just a list of contacts for the media to communicate with. Even if we have a daily briefing, things are going to come up where we, we might need to send questions beforehand so that we have those answers when we have a daily briefing because the lag in information is very much also due to ask a question 48 hours later, everyone's been consulted, then you get the answer. So that we would be able to send our questions ahead of time to have them answered um, on a timely basis. Okay. Is there an urgent one to add to what she said? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wanted to, uh, just a simple question please, in terms of uh, the lockdown and uh, in terms of people staying in the house, does that mean that uh, they are not allowed to go outside to job or can they visit, if I stay in town, am I able to go and visit my family in Katutura? Just to, to clarify on that, please, Doctor. Sorry, Doctor, you said the newspapers can move, but can the journalists move? Well, if, uh, uh, we close now. Yeah, yeah. we close. Uh, uh, I will leave, I'll give you my number, maybe we can talk about that. Um, maybe I can just start with the last comment there. Please answer, if, not to make you my secretary. But, um, yeah, you can check on the screen if he says minister who or so, because those are the guys. Um, 
One of the, to start with the last question there, one of the important thing in this type of outbreaks and, and pandemic is the maintenance of mental health. Uh, meaning eating healthy, uh, but also meaning physically being active. That's one thing. We actually encourage like healthcare professional, including myself, I said I, I went from Parma Guruma to all of Parma and then back to Nelson Mandela. And I feel good when I do that. So, and we know that in a distance of two meters, you cannot pass the virus to me. So if we are jogging with nice space in an open, I foresee no problem with that. Uh, maybe we need to finalize it at a committee and the regulatory level, but that's what I would propose, that we don't prevent people from jogging. Uh, and we know that the stress level is actually much higher if you are not physically active. So, and basically, my, the only medicine I take at my age is jogging. I don't take any other medication. In fact, I can't even tolerate medicine. Uh, so, and uh, I want to continue on that trajectory. So, mental health, it's good for jogging. Maybe I should just go upwards now with the questions now that I start over. Okay, let's, let's go to number 11, my question. The food and cleaning service, is it part of essential service? Yes, it's part of essential service. Now, we can possibly not go into nitty gritty of domestic cleaners, factory workers, office cleaners, street cleaners. Let's put them in one, one category of cleaners. Everyone who does cleaning services. It's an essential service. The only thing, and this is what I told the municipality, is that we must not ferry them in this municipal buses that we are doing at a time. If we do that, first of all, we need to disinfect the buses and only carry people that are a meter distance in that bus. And it becomes so difficult, actually. We may have to resort to maybe a select of small cars like taxis that can carry five people. Maybe also giving some work to Texas who are willing to comply. First, disinfect it, and we mark it. We know where it departs, where it parks, so that they don't go and do own work there. Uh, I'm just throwing ideas. But practically, um, that would mean like two people in one car, so the yeah. driver and one passenger. Yes, or, or something of that sort. Because yeah. the whole idea is to minimize many people in one place. As well. If we can all stick to that, you can give input. So. The buses are the problem, but cleaning as a service, we do not want to close it. We don't want to close it. So if whatever way you clean, you have to go clean. So unless other privately arrangements are made. And then there was a question whether we will test after lockdown. You see, the whole idea of locking down is to prevent the spread, the spread of the virus, but also to see and uh, making it easy if we link community to healthcare services that we can easily pick up who are the symptomatic that we need to test and treat and maybe even isolate. And one of the reasons why we make it 21 days is to make sure that we go beyond the 14 incubation period of the virus, that we create an additional buffer to make sure that if you miss it in the 14 days, you actually go up to 21 days. After that, there's no need to test, except if you are symptomatic. Because the virus will not end in 21 days or the next three months. It will be with us and it probably will come a little bit later towards the end of April going into May, June. That's where we, we foresee. Meaning that this lockdown may last a, a bit longer than the 21 days. So that, those are the possibilities, but it's an evolving situation, and we adjust our strategy as the need arises. So that's, that's the, in, a, in answering your question. There is something we call repurposing and, and task shifting, meaning that if I'm a doctor and I know how to operate, I can take out your appendix. I must also learn how to clean, that if there is a need that I need to clean, I must clean or cook. So if this is a media house, we can actually convert it to an isolation hospital. So if you are brewing alcohol or tobacco, or whatever, we can make you our manufacturer for sanitizer very easily. That's a very brilliant suggestion. 
because it's a time of war where we change the rules of engagement. That's basically what, what we are saying. Uh, very, very useful. Uh, I think I have answered the question of essential services somehow. Uh, and I have said the list is not complete. We we'll see if we meet every morning there, we're not just meeting for you to question us and we answer. We're meeting to share ideas and proposals. And that's why we need a focal person from the media who probably meet with you and then come to us at a strategic level and say, this is what the media feel. When we meet, things will be easy because we know already what each one uh, expect. So we list those one and we, we, maybe within the regulation we can say it from this hour and from this place to this place, but now uh, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, and that's why I want to put this as a blanketing, cleaning services, medical services, logistic, me news media, all, you know, this, this is for my lost end. And, and, and I think by tomorrow or by the end of the weekend, we'll have those itemized things. And we we'll always leave space for more. Because we can't think of it only us, you know, somebody may come up with something we never thought of. So that's, that's where we are. But we want to make it pragmatic. And, and practical and, 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 and reasonable. We don't want to go uh, unreasonable. Uh, I, 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 I think I have touched most of the, the question. Is there anything I left out, especially on your question? It was just about if you are not an essential service business, yes. are you required to close during the lockdown? Yes, yes, you are required to close section. Okay. Yeah. Um, unless something maybe comes up from other sectors of the government and say, let's review, let's say, construction. Or the, yeah, and then it can be added to the list of essential. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, Dr. Fernando, yeah. ask a question. Do you have touch on it? Um, where we stand right now, uh, what's the number of cases? Ah, yeah. we, so far, seven cases. Uh, I don't know if it, it, I didn't get today's update. I'm going to get it now from. Uh, Emil, she phoned me at 6 o'clock. She would have told me if they pick up another case. Have you had something in that, sir? No, there's a lot of speculations going around. Yeah. People uh, uh, frantically calling from Rehoboth saying there's a case um, at the Pano Hospital as well as the State Hospital. Um, so if we could just get clarity on that. Yeah, well, maybe those are suspect cases. <laughs> yeah, what we're reporting is confirmed laboratory cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, uh, you say you're going to meet with, yes. the, with the security cluster at now with the uh, Oh, you'll be giving feedback going forward? Oh, I just said we're trying to, to put up this basic, to put up something like here, where every morning at a given hour we are there. To give. No, 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 no. I don't think they, they provide the logistic. I mean, I wish I had money to buy a podium and the speaker and light, because the place doesn't have those things as we speak. And, uh, you know, I actually feel vindicated because when I was minister, there were two things I was pushing. One is the establishment of the National Institute of Public Health, precisely for outbreak like this. And I propose that we amend the NIP Act to make NIP our National Institute of Public Health because we don't need, we don't need the huge building. We can just convert NIP office into this. It would have been our command center today. But NIP is a beautiful office there with branches all over the country, but it's only a laboratory institute. Their work is only to test nothing else. While the public institute have four pillars, laboratory service, surveillance, preparedness and response, and training of public health officials. Uh, I've been pushing for that, but I, I ran into war, people opposing it, and, you know, and I've been accused that I, I, I want to do something. I can't even remember. Then comes hepatitis E. And I said, we need an emergency operations center, well equipped, well staffed, so that we can operate easily. We struggled to get it. That's why that center up to now, we don't have the light and all these things. So it's sometimes our tardiness in getting things quick and efficiently done that set us in situations such as this. And if you talk to Mr. Pume Kashwanyo, a retired old man now, he will tell you, ah, Dr. Ofiku maybe had a vision ahead that one day we will be in trouble. This is where we are today, you know. So this is not for reporting, obviously, mm -hmm. say, <laughs> to share. So on that note, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for inviting me here. And uh, I think I will yes with the lady after the closure, because otherwise we won't close.
Uh, once again, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for the for this. Just, just quickly, um, thank you very much, Dr. Afiku. And uh, for those who are here, I will ask uh, Elizabeth, uh, as part of the uh, Editors Forum Namibia, to remain in contact with Dr. Alfiku, and then we'll see how we can best uh, spread the news a bit more efficiently than was able between yesterday and today. So in future, so, uh, you all get your notices in time, and you know what to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>